Hi everybody, in this video we're going to start diving into how to deal with the interior of this box as well to make sure that it's going to look also very functional in its detailed state. So let's just actually open this up. So because we actually added this as a kind of a pivot for us to work from, we can just kind of pull this up. So now in this case we can actually go to about 95 to looks like about 100 degrees. I'm keeping snaps on so that I can always kind of bring this back to its original position and not run into any problems. You can also check out the bottom section here just to make sure that you are rotating this in the direction that you need to uh, and that it is working appropriately. So we could set this to a, a final kind of angle to work with, but some of these numbers change and don't quite work the way that you want. So I do recommend you just keep it at those snapped angles so that you can kind of work with this fluidly and easily. But again, let's just kind of pull this open. I'm going to bring it, bring it to 90 degrees in this case so that we've got something manageable. And now we can start looking at what we've got on the inside here. So, for example, this section, uh, there's basically nothing interesting going on. Uh, this is not actually even functional at this point, so we've got to figure out something to work with here. So let's just take this and let's do a simple inset. So that'll work out decently for us. And we do want to also add in that little bit of a cut here, because this piece should be going into it in a reasonable way. Uh, so we do want to make sure that this section looks appropriate for that. So let's do a bit of an extrude in this case, because when you extrude on an edge, you create these larger surfaces here. And this is all matching up with this pretty decently. I don't think there's any real problem there. We can look at the front and just make sure that these angles are all correct. That looks even the whole way through. Let's go into perspective mode. Let's make sure that that is the case. And that does look good. So I'm going to bring this down. I'm just going to actually kind of snap this into that section there. I'm going to select all of these, and then I'm going to just weld them all together. Uh, so we'll just go with a, well, let's bring it over here. Uh, let's go with a weld selected. So that's usually on a very small threshold, so you can just basically assume that it's going to connect it all together because we've snapped them. So that works out decently. Now we could do whatever we want with this as well. Uh, you could bring this up snap this towards this position. Now it looks like we're getting some like broken edges here, but if you just move this slightly, it'll be fine. So that works okay, but let's just take this whole section and just extrude it in a little bit, and we could flatten it out as well. So there's no reason that we kind of have to keep this section pushed in like that, but we could try some ideas where maybe we push this section in, see what that looks like. If there's any kind of geometry you don't want in this, it's perfectly fine, just delete it. Uh, and we can reconnect this up differently. So for example, this section here, let's just pull this over and let's target weld or target weld right here. Target weld that to this point and this point to here. And then we can just select borders and cap that off on the inside. So again, it's worth trying out some of these designs. Again, I could actually just select all of my vertices as well and go into a weld. Since it's such a low threshold, you can see only one vertice has been collapsed together, which happens to be this one. Just kind of keeps things a little bit cleaner. So you could push that in over here, or we could start to grab these sections and bring this down entirely. There's really no wrong answer in how you choose to design these kinds of elements. This may be covered in a lot of gold and things like that, so it may not even be noticeable what we see in here. But it's just worth trying to make sure that you figure out what that's supposed to be. Let's just connect that up as well. Come back in here. Uh, and so in this case, we could start to just flatten this whole thing out. Uh, let's actually not get that part yet. But kind of snap this towards the base. And that works pretty decently. Uh, one thing we might want to do is just add in another set of edges here. Uh, something that might be just a little bit more interesting. Just connect up through here as well. This one I'm going to snap down here, but I don't want to break this shape, so I'm going to use my edge constraints to kind of pull that down here. That works pretty decent. And I'm going to chamfer this shape. Not really too concerned as to what's happening over here. It's perfectly fine. Select this whole edge, flatten that out as well. Flatten this out as well. The reason that I'm creating this is so that I can extrude this in, wait, not along constraints, just kind of pull this in towards the center. That works out pretty well. I do want to see this clearly, so I'm just going to go down and auto smooth on my smoothing groups down here. 
because usually that's going to work out pretty decently to see the kind of effect that I want to see. If any of these edges are popping out too much, that's perfectly fine. Just kind of push that back in so that it looks nice and clean. You can look at it from the front to get a sense of where those edges are actually going and if they're lining up where they're supposed to. You just kind of snap that stuff back together. Same with this as well. There we go. And any of these pieces that aren't quite in alignment, we just want to make sure that they are so that everything will look nice and clean. That's pretty decent for now. In the end, most of this stuff's going to be seen from far away, so it's not too big of a deal if those things don't line up quite perfectly. But I do like the idea of there being a tapered section inside. That just gives us a few more shapes to work with and reads well from a distance. Without that information, you just got a little bit less to work with uh, and you can't really draw too much attention to it. We could get rid of that information in there and see what that looks like. Again, it's always good to just try things out. So if you wanted a bigger space for large objects to go into, you'd work with that. It's good to talk to your game designers or game directors to try to figure out what it is that's supposed to go into these kinds of objects so you can figure out what kind of space you actually have to work with. Or again, just talk to the concept artist. Sometimes they can just quickly put together a concept that you can work with, and that helps a lot as well when trying to design these things. Because at the end uh, of the day, it basically does become your job to make sure that these things look good and look interesting. Uh, it's not necessarily just a concept artist's job to always figure out all of the functional parts of these things as much as just provide a real good foundation for you to work off of. So that works pretty decent. And again, let's just toss down that symmetry modifier uh, so that the other side of this works nice and clean. So that's pretty nice. Now this top section here is what we can look at in our next video.